out of the bag. Uh, Greg the Hammer Williams is going to join us tomorrow on our remote, kind of an old school hard line get together. No clue what's going to happen, what direction things are going to go, but there'll be some uh, interesting staples that <laughs> those that have listened from way back when will probably enjoy. And if you're a new listener and have barely an idea who Mike Reiner is, which is weird, I, I've met one person who was big fans of the station prior, and they've come on board with listening to The Freak Now and us. He's like, man, I had no clue who I was, which is not surprising, but no idea who Mike Reiner was. Like, hey, he's funny. That guy's great. So it's, I'm funny? Yeah. yeah it's one guy thought you were funny. All right, you got that great. going for you. Right. funny. Yeah, that, that was another thing. I wasn't funny. <laughs> he, Grego was the funny one. <laughs> he would say Reiner ain't funny? No, it was fake Grego okay, said that. okay. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be wild tomorrow. We encourage you to listen. Tomorrow, December 7th, it is uh, the last day of the ratings book. And uh, for a long time in radio, many radio stations use that day to try to do something big, something fun, try to end with a bang. And we do realize that the ticket does do White Elephant that day, and that's why they do it that day, because it's the last day of the ratings book before the holiday book kicks in. And the holiday book is one that radio stations tend to not care as much about as the December one. Right. So, you know. I mean, the people, oh, you're doing it because of White Elephant. Like, yeah, I mean, that's right. We are. <laughs> Partially. We're, we're doing it for the same reason that White Elephant is White yes. Elephant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But because of who you guys are and who we all are, it's immediate But it is comparison. Look, it is pretty fascinating how quickly this came together. This, Within 20 minutes? Oh I mean, God. this was like a, almost a whim. Yeah. Well, I will admit, and I've, I mentioned something a month or two ago about having an idea to do this and you know someone responded to me yesterday about how this has been planned for a while but i hadn't mentioned it to mike and i hadn't mentioned it to you obviously you only been here a damn week i don't know if i mentioned it to you, you mentioned it to me and i remember pretty much saying dude there's no way like i think i pretty much told you don't even ask like don't even tell ryan and, and you know what you yeah. did no, no don't tell ryan don't, don't tell, tell ryan, ryan. <laughs> no no Paul Goldie. don't you come out here Oh, Goldie. <laughs> what does that even mean? Nobody knows. <laughs> well, I've always had this idea in the back of my head. This would be wild. And I, we were sitting there pre-show yesterday, and I looked at my damn little calendar on the bottom of the computer, and it said December 5th. And this snuck up on me so fast that the end of the ratings period is December 7th. So I'm like, okay. We run it by Mike. Mike's like, all right. We can try my, it. My first instinct was to go, no. No yeah. way. Yeah, what softened you up on even considering this? I don't know. I was standing I, I, out there when it was presented. And I'm like, hey, no way, man. <laughs> He's not going to go for this. I just rethought it. I just rethought it. And, and you know, he and I have been in this, like I said earlier, he and I have since been in the same place at the same time. And it was okay, you know? Yeah. I mean, we were, we were, we did okay together. And so... I don't know. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, let's, okay, let's give this a shot. And you know I what? I got on the phone with him and talked to him about it. I couldn't believe I still remembered his, his number. It's the same number? Yes. Isn't it funny that, that you were asking me what his number was? Yeah. Like if I had it? And I, for yeah. whatever reason, because I've had probably 12 phones since <laughs> 2007, and it wasn't in my phone, but I think, oh, I think it's this. And we say, said the same number. Yeah. Yeah. And so I called it, and he picked up. It's one of the handful of numbers that I have memorized to this day on a number that I haven't thought about or called in years. It was weird because I heard Mike's half of the whole conversation, and I could hear a little bit of of Greg on the other side of the line. But that is probably the first time you guys have talked on the phone in 15 years or so. It was an odd call for you to make. And it'll be fun tomorrow. And it might yeah, be it good. Will. It might it be will. cleansing. Like, I'm pretty sure you're not losing sleep about this for over a decade but it's something you've harbored, something mm-hmm. in your life that you probably, through no fault of yours, don't feel great about that it's an episode that happened. He certainly does. Mm-hmm. This might end up uh, feeling pretty damn good. It might be therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanna, I, we want to laugh with it. If you guys want to argue, that's fine. But I, in the end, if it's therapeutic and it's a closing of the a final you know, part of a book, maybe that'll be good, too. Yeah. Now, I do want you to follow up on the question that I asked you. You know, the way that you handled things. Now, I get it. It was about, you know, when you kind of went into self-protection mode, you felt like Grego's not a guy that I can trust. I can't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. When he was trying to make amends and try to reconnect with you after he had left the station, um, 
and you just weren't interested in, in you, not enough time had passed for you to have any type of relationship with him. Did you feel, do you feel badly now or did you ever feel badly? It's like, man, I know this guy's got problems, but deep down inside, he's got a good heart. He's not a bad person. He got wrapped up in something. He probably uh, alongside some pretty serious trauma that may have led to addiction issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these things that did you ever, did you ever, when did you start feeling empathy? Like, man, maybe I'd. Maybe I kind of feel crappy about I don't the way know. I handled it. Or I, did you ever? I, I I don't know if I ever did. I don't know if I do now. I don't know if I ever will. But like I say, I'm not good with grudges. And usually a little time will take care of just about everything for me. I mean, if, it'll take, if time will take care of this, then time will take care of anything. But as far as a timetable, I don't know. I, I really can't give you one. I mean, I knew that. That during the making of the documentary, we were probably going to be in the same place at the same time. And as I said, it's kind of doing me a solid here. So I was going to be cordial at least. But to this day, like, do you, after everything, and look, man, people that make choices like Grego made, and he made a lot of really bad choices that affected a lot of people, mm -hmm. but also a lot of those choices were very self-destructive. I think that for a period of time, he was probably involved in some things that were, he might even feel lucky to be alive today. And I bet if you asked him that tomorrow, he'd say, yeah, it's it's a wonder that I'm even standing here. I don't think there's any question about that. Do, do you feel any kind of empathy for him? Not feel sorry for him, but, but does your heart kind of feel something like, man... I feel bad for the guy. I, I I I wish that it hadn't turned out this way. He, I know he brought a lot of it on himself, but who knows what what led to to, to this type of behavior or this type of you know drug addiction and and some of the the choices that that he made. Do you feel any kind of love or empathy towards this man that maybe you were prohibited from feeling because of of your of how angry and upset you were at him and the situation? I feel like we are where we are because we put ourselves there. You know, I, I feel I feel like ultimately we all have a good amount of control over where we wind up. And it still just galls me how somebody can get an opportunity like I gave him. And make no mistake, I did give him that. He will freely admit it that I'm that I can give him an opportunity like that and have him treat it the way he did. That still galls me a little bit. Yeah. And in fact, it galls me more than a little bit. It galls me a lot, but I don't know. I think of the guy now and I don't feel quite as strongly about all that anymore. Is, did I answer that the way you wanted? I think so. Let me, let me even go further with this. Okay. There, there, there are probably a lot of, professionals and experts that deal with personality disorders with addictions that might disagree with some of what you're saying when you talk about some people that that people have control that they might come back and say well because of whatever reason whether it be some childhood trauma or maybe the way that they were wired in their brains mm -hmm. that that the way they were created like some people have tiny fins for arms mm -hmm. and other people have defective brains that need to be fixed and sometimes things just ne aren't necessarily in their control when you put them in a certain scenario or under some cer certain circumstances until they go through that and kind of lay waste to their own lives and maybe others until they get some awareness and some help and some treatment and get a grasp on that then they can maybe start realizing that they do have that control do you feel like maybe during all that time that it wasn't it wasn't ill intended the things that he was doing he wasn't intentionally trying to f up his career he wasn't trying to get fired from the ticket he wasn't trying to sabotage the hard line he was not trying to hurt you or me or Corby or anybody else in his periphery um, intentionally do you, do you, is there part of you that can get your head around that and go yeah. I mean, the guy may have been dealt a bad deck of cards, and yeah, I was probably pretty hard on him. And you know, with all all due reasoning, you that you had, I don't disagree with you, and that's probably the best way to handle 
some of those situations. But is there any part of you that that kind of can look at it from a different lens and be like, man, it sucks for that guy. It's unfortunate. You know, oh, who oh. knows what, what kind of what kind of deck that guy was dealt, what kind of cards that guy was dealt. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand all that. And I, I realize that that he, you know, without knowing any more about his background than I do and the, what he's told me about it. It was not the best. I mean, he was he he came into the situation real poorly prepped to handle it. And had I not cut him as much slack as I could possibly cut any human being at all for, over all that time, then yeah, I would, I, had I not done that, then Maybe I would be able to look at it that way, but but I hear what you're saying, and I think it's possible, but only to a, to a small extent. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. I think so. Can you talk more about that, though? I mean, I don't know. Like, like what? I, I, I guess, because look, I, I've been mad about things that have happened in the past and that that other people created mm-hmm. and as time goes by and you realize that we're all you know fallible flawed often damaged hurt insecure human beings that are trying to do the best that we can and sometimes somebody else's best doesn't match what we think it should be or what we think our best is mm-hmm. that we can kind of maybe be a little and I don't I don't want to use this word and it may be the wrong word but but judgmental to a degree of kind of self preservation that I think once time goes by and we have a better understanding of ourselves and 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 look at other people through a different lens that there can be I guess what I'm asking you is have you have you forgiven the guy? Have you given him real forgiveness and said, man, I love you. I forgive you. I know you were having a rough time. You hurt me. You hurt a lot of people. You screwed up your life, but I do care about you. Have you have you gotten to that point yet? Um, I may be there. I don't know. I've never said those words to him, but I don't know. I may be there. I might be. I'm definitely closer to it than than you ever have been. Than I ever yeah. have been. Yeah. Now he's tried to apologize, right? And you kind of didn't many want to times, hear it many times, and I didn't want to hear it. But I think you accepting that apology would be maybe his goal, well, I suppose, or maybe you genuinely accepting the apology, which I don't still don't know if you're ready to do. No, I don't know if I'm ready to do it either. Well, another thing you have to keep in mind is people that go through twelve step stuff and therapy and treatment like that. It it's probably pretty well and it should be if it's not it should be pretty well understood with them by whoever is kind of guiding them through that process that your bid for res for for uh, rest resolution and to make amends it may not be met with the answer that you want and you have to accept that for yourself that yeah. look i tried to apologize this person was not willing to accept it you can't base the success of your treatment or your self-worth on being validated by the people that you hurt because yeah. they may never forgive you yeah and that's I, I bet he would tell you that that's kind of what what this looks like on his end of it right but i don't know for a long time i just wasn't there i just was I, I just couldn't do it. Well, but, the whole, the whole. I'm sorry, Mikey. The whole dynamic of this relationship, you know, at the time when he left, it's like, look, we still got work to do. We got to figure out what are we going to do for well, a yeah, show. Yeah, you know, the, you don't have a lot of time to 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 kind of reflect on the nuance and the intricacies of a person's makeup and and what these things kind of mean on a deeper level. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I've always been fascinated with was that relationship and and how maybe one day that could change that it wouldn't just yeah. that you guys wouldn't just go to your graves with screw him he screwed up this chance he mm-hmm. lied to me over and over again and i think that's what i don't know that's what i hope that that we all kind of can evolve to is to realize that we're all just screwed up messes that 
are just doing the best that we can in this world. And, you know, I think that's a good way to be. And I love, I love hearing what you're saying. I think it's great for you to even come on the air right now and just say, Hey man, I, I think I might be close to, well, the fact it, it's even happening, yeah, the fact shows that, yeah, that. That's the fact true. that he made that call yesterday. Well, a lot the of fact people that he's well, willing to do this and give Greg o, I, this opportunity, I suppose. Well, the reason I even bring this close. up is is I, I think a lot of people will look at this this thing that's happening tomorrow and look at it as kind of the way we described it. Oh, it's just a ratings grab. They're just trying to screw up the tickets, white elephant. There's no there's no depth to this, but I just want people to understand this was a very unique relationship that ended in a in a bizarre fashion and there were a lot of hurt feelings that have been carried for years and years. I mean, you talk about a scene that crashed and burned. My god. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is it, it there's there's more depth to this than just a radio stunt. Let's oh, it's use, real. Let, it's yeah. real. Let's yeah. let's use the hammer and and screw up the tickets, white elephant. You know that is there a, is there a truth to that? I don't know, but I'd like to think that there's more to it than just that. If in case in any element of the other exists, um, well, I'd like for this to mean something more to people oh, it, than, than it, it just be. Uh, I want the hammer radio back. Stunt. Yeah, a radio gag. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't happen if it was just that because. It is very real, and him agreeing to do it, making that call, you know, is was hard. Yeah, the date, you know, can't be ignored. I don't think it's insignificant, but that doesn't mean it make it any less real. What's going to happen tomorrow? Well, yeah, competitors counter program. Right, that's the nature of the business. It's the last day of the book. Yep, it is. This happens all the time in every form of business, no matter what it may be. Right. Well, I just want people. Like, okay, I just want I'll people say, to get I'll something more about, meaningful out of this. Do you than think just, it's just counter programming? Yes. Is all I'm saying. I will, but to yeah. Mike's point of, I don't think it's much of a coincidence that Gordon's on afternoon drive during White Elephant, especially if you heard the draft. That there was, oh, there's rules, and you know, Davey was picking early. Oh wait, there's rules. I can't do that. I can't do this. Oh, coincidentally. Gordon on afternoon drive when he was the third or fourth pick. I don't think that's a coincidence. It's not. It's not. No. And neither is it this. It is not. And neither is the timing of this. Right. So if we can be transparent and admit that, even though, yes, it's very important. It's a big day for Mike. It's a probably bigger day for, for Greg. Hopefully it's a big day for people who have been fans of theirs for the majority of their lives. But, I mean, I don't think we're scared to admit that the day is significant. Of course. Yeah. The difference is we'll admit it. They won't. Right. Because well, that would be acknowledging the the draft has been rigged for years. Yeah, the draft has been rigged for years. <laughs> yeah, and in this case, rigged to ensure that Gordon is where they want him. Yeah, because the guy's hilarious. He's a genius, and it's smart. It is smart, but we're admitting it. Um, real quick, you have fax fodder back in the day, right? And what was that? You, we looked into buying a damn fax machine so people could <laughs> fax crap in. But I'm like, not putting that much effort into this. Let's do Twitter fodder or t- email fodder yes. or something like that. And if you want to ask Mike Reiner anything about this, if you want to directly ask Greg Williams anything about this, Groobs, Danny, hell, I don't know what the hell you'd have to ask me, but I'll be presenting the thing uh, at Downbeat DFW. And I always filter these things and make sure that, you know, whatever, it's arable, and we have to do that. If they cross a line, I'm not going to ask it. But generally speaking, I'm firing off questions that the listener has maybe wondered for a lot of years that might make you and Greg uncomfortable. Um, Fire away. At Downbeat DFW, send me anything you want. Starting right now, I'll be uh, compiling a big old list, and we're going to do it at whatever time you guys used to do (laughs) fax fodder. When was that? It was typically the end of the show, wasn't it? Yeah, that was like... um what six thirty or so? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Is that so, right, Shoopy? Some reason six is sticking in my mind for yeah, it. But I think, I'm yeah, not maybe right. so. All maybe right. So. so we'll probably do it at six tomorrow. Anything you want to ask at Downbeat DFW? I'm going to put them together, and that should be juicy as well. This is tomorrow. This is live on remote at Diamond Factory. It's one three seven one nine Omega Road, right here in Addison. Uh, the Diamond Factory. Just Google it. Greg's going to be there. Mike's going to be there. I guess there's a big showroom. Yeah. It's going to be uh, something to see, if nothing else. So uh, if you want to participate, send those tweets away. Uh, but it's going to be wild. All right, coming up next, Sunset Lounge. We're going to replay a bit that happened this morning that you guys haven't heard yet. KT put it together.